Hello everybody, Todd at Altera here, back with another video. We are long overdue on a maintenance video, uh, the way we recommend taking care of your Altera rifle. We recommend cleaning every 40, 60, 80 rounds, depending on caliber, more frequent for the, the larger Magnums. You can go longer than that, you are not gonna hurt the rifle. We just find that a little bit more frequent cleaning keeps them shooting as accurately as possible. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through cleaning the bore, cleaning the muzzle brake, removal of the muzzle brake, and maintenance of the bolt. We had this rifle at a shooting school a couple weeks ago and it has not been cleaned since halfway through that school. So we've got about 50 rounds on this rifle right now. Took a video of the bore as it sits dirty. So you can see what that looks like and we'll just start cleaning it and go from there. What we're gonna do first is take our Dewey rod, high quality rods make a big difference for the longevity of your rifle. These are carbon coated, so very uh, abrasion resistant on the inside of the bore. Back on track. We like to use a, a simple bore guide. Doesn't really matter what bore guide you use. Just keeps fluids from collecting in the chamber area or backing in. If you put your rifle in a vise like this, tip it forward a little bit so all of your fluids are gonna be pulled down the bore, not back into the chamber like I just mentioned. This is a 6.5 PRC, so we have a 6.5 brass jag, an inch and three quarter patch, little bit of carbon remover, We'll just see what these first three patches get out of there. If you wanna keep the top of your stock nice, you can put a, a rag underneath it while you're working there. First patch, really not bad. Slowly drawing the jag, the, the jag back into the bore. We don't worry about taking these jags off every time, as long as you're slow and careful that you're not really hammering it into the crown of your barrel. It's just fine. So that's our initial three patches. Don't be alarmed if yours are dirtier than that. And now we're gonna switch to a nylon brush. 6.5 brush. Carbon remover still. Just enough to wet that brush. And here, that squeaking is the rotating rod in the handle, not in the bore. We're gonna do this forward and back about 30 times. Just loosening all that carbon. Okay, and after your 30 passes, take the brush off, go back to the brass jag. We're gonna keep patching it with the carbon remover to get out everything that we just loosened up. We're already cleaner there than we were on those initial three. And just because you're not seeing a whole lot of gunk on the patches when they come out doesn't mean that you're not doing something important or accuracy changing. That patch right there was really clean. So I'm gonna call it good there. And we're gonna run the bore scope back in. Okay, so these, these bore scopes are really cool. We use it on every single rifle we build for inspection and stuff. It's a Teslong Wi-Fi bore cam. And what we should see versus the first view 
is going to be less dark gray carbon and more copper. The copper that was underneath starting to show up. That's what we like to see when you get to about the last third of the bore. You should start to see that copper showing. This area right here, the throat, is particularly important to keep carbon free. You'll notice when you're shooting, and if you look at your, your brass case, a lot of times there's carbon around the neck of it. That carbon on the neck of your case also builds up in the neck of your chamber. So when you get too much carbon in that neck portion of the chamber, it's changing pressure on the neck of your case and is essentially like having inconsistent neck tension in your ammunition. So that is something to really pay attention to cleaning. If you do have carbon in the neck of your chamber, this is a 357 brass jag. We don't like to run brass jags full length down the bore, but for working on a, a carbon ring in the neck, they're just right. So we'll take it, a little bit of carbon destroyer on there, and we'll just go in to where it feels tight. And we I know it's in the neck of the chamber right now and I'll just spin it. You can spin that a couple few dozen times and pull it out and it will keep that neck area of your chamber nice and clean. Getting on track to copper remover. We're gonna do the same thing, start with a regular jag run three patches worth of copper remover this time, followed by a copper remover soaked brush at 30 strokes like we did with the carbon. So I'll go ahead and take care of those things right now. The copper remover, a lot of times you'll start to see blues and greens on the patches when you know it's doing its job. Third patch, pretty clean. You can still see the rifling on it pretty well though. Okay, switching again to the nylon brush. Sometimes these brushes will get bent a little bit. Just make sure it's pretty straight when you're setting up to go in there. Good idea to wear gloves with this cleaning stuff, especially this carbon remover. It's a bit more ammonia based. And once again, do about 30 strokes forward and back. Make sure you're not grabbing the rod and keeping it from turning and following that rifling. Otherwise you'll loosen up the brush on the end of it and it might end up off inside the bore. Okay. We're almost done now. Back to the brass jag. And now we're going to finish it off by pushing some patches with rubbing alcohol. We like the rubbing alcohol to sort of neutralize the cleaners that we've already got in there. It also evaporates quickly. So we've still got a bit of yellow, a little more debris coming out. And it may, might take five 10 of these patches with rubbing alcohol to get all the cleaning and remaining residue out of the bore. We're getting pretty clean now. Clean patch. We're gonna call it done right there. So we're gonna take the bore guide out and this is an important step to finishing it up. We like to use a chamber mop 
with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. And really clean and dry the chamber out. So that mops right there in the chamber, spinning clockwise. And that's gonna dry any cleaning residue that have come back into the chamber. If you don't do this, it can mess with the pressures of your rounds, similar to leaving sizing lube on your reloads. So let's take another look with the camera and then we'll jump to showing you how to clean that muzzle brake. We have a nice clean chamber. I don't see any carbon buildup in the neck. We're looking nice and clean on the lands and grooves from the start, running it down. You might see patch fibers and stuff in there. Don't be alarmed by any small things like that. And of course, this is assuming you have a, a bore cam. It's really hard to get all the copper out and you don't really need to. See a little bit more at the end of the muzzle right there. Okay. So compared to our first pass down the bore, this is looking really clean. Chamber and neck look good. That's all we gotta do. Now, you don't have to clean the inside of your muzzle brake often at all. It's not near as important as the rifled portion of the barrel, but this is just a good way to do it if you wanted to. We'll take the jag and a patch, and we're gonna measure with our fingers from just inside the brake to some reference point on the receiver going to be right there. We'll take the patch and run it in. And we're going to stop it right at our reference point. So I know that this patch is right in here to where I can take some rubbing alcohol and get those brake ports nice and soaked. I'll use a little bit smaller nylon brush and soak it as well. And then it's sort of like brushing its teeth. The initial cleaning process already took care of the bore of the muzzle brake. Here we're really just cleaning those ports off. There's some carbon here on the fins. We can take that same brush and just clean off the outside of the fins. Shows up more on some Cerakote colors than others. This is smoked bronze, one of the lighter colors. So you see that carbon on the brake a lot easier with it. And a small rag to dry it all off. And then we'll go through and finish pushing the patch out and by it sitting in there, any of that spray and scrubbing I was doing was just getting on the patch, not back into the bore. So this is a good step to do at the very end. Next thing I'm gonna work on is cleaning the bolt. This bolt, if you look close at it, there's a bit of previous grease that's gotten sort of gray and it feels sticky all the way around. It's not running as smooth as it could, so that's why we're gonna go ahead and clean it up. Back to our rubbing alcohol. Just give a, a light spray all over the bolt. Now our bolts make contact inside the receiver on the outside of the bolt lugs, at the back of the bolt lugs, and then again at this slightly oversized ring portion in the back. So with gloves on and the rubbing alcohol, I'm just gonna go and remove all of the previous grease and wipe it off with a rag. A little bit of this accuracy grease here. You don't need much on the end of a Q-tip. And we're gonna give a light wipe over 
the outsides of the bolt lug where you can see it makes contact and a small amount around the seating ring in back. And these are obvious spots when you look at your bolt. You can see exactly where everything contacts. We'll put it back in and cycle the bolt. Little bit of grease might get on the receiver next to the fire and safe area. You can just take and wipe all that stuff down with a rag afterward. So that's all you got to do with the bolt. There's no need to take the bolt apart, take the firing pin out or anything like that, unless you get way down the road with your rifle and you feel like doing that. But that is not part of general maintenance. Let's jump over to the muzzle brake. We get a lot of questions about removing the muzzle brakes. So we put our brakes on very tight by design. We do not want these rotating at all during shooting. That essentially acts as a tuner and will change the harmonic of your barrel if they're moving at all. So we go to a high torque and we also use a small dab of blue Loctite. So the easiest way to get these off is move your rifle into the vise grabbed by the barrel rather than the stock and grab onto it pretty tight. If you have a piece of leather or something to act as a, as a cushion or a buffer, you can go real tight on these carbon barrels. You're not gonna hurt them. Since it has the Loctite, we wanna heat it up to break that bond. So with a heat gun, you could, if you don't have a heat gun, you could even simmer some water and just hold the about three quarters of the metal brake portion into some hot water. If you do a heat gun, aim it away from the carbon fiber. You just want to put direct heat on the metal, not the carbon. And I'm gonna get this hot to about the point that I don't really wanna to touch it with my bare fingers. What we're gonna to use to take the brake off is a screwdriver with a light wrap of masking tape that fits nicely through the ports in the brake. High heat like this is not gonna affect your Cerakote paint job. It's plenty tough enough of a coating to handle that. Also, you may not be able to tell on your rifle where the metal on the barrel ends and the brake starts because the guys do such a good job with blending. But if you need to take your brake off, really the only reason you should take your brake off is if you're gonna use a suppressor or something different. Otherwise, it never needs to come off for maintenance. So it's hot. I'm not worried about where the seam is and messing up the paint job from there. To take it off, we're gonna go up through the bottom on the left side toward the top on the right, since we need to turn it left with the barrel nice and tight, both hands. If it doesn't pop loose right away, heat it up some more in the side like that and there it goes. So we got 5 8 24 threads on here. You'll notice that there's a lot of debris underneath from that Loctite that we unfroze. We can go back to our rubbing alcohol again. Put a little bit on the threads, nylon brush, and that Loctite will clean right up. Okay, so at this point, it's perfectly ready to mount a suppressor or adapter or whatever you wanna do. Even, I'll end up just putting the muzzle brake back on. I'll let it cool off, I'll drop a Loctite, go back on, and retorque it as tight as I can 
that'll put it right back where it was. About the only other thing for general maintenance on these rifles would be torque of your action screws, torque wrench. Uh, these are T25 action screws. We like to double check that they're at 55 pounds. Go through, make sure you uh, didn't get any cleaning solution on your scope or anywhere on the rifle that it's maybe seeping down into the sides. But if you're gonna let your rifle sit, say for the off season, it doesn't hurt at all to run uh, one regular oil patch followed by a dry patch just to lightly coat the bore with some oil. It's also not mandatory. That's it for maintenance of your rifle. Clean the carbon out, clean the copper out, clean the throat of your chamber, dry the chamber when you're done. We hit the points on the bolt greasing, removal of the brake if you need to, and that's about it. These rifles are built to last, built to perform. They'll do it under all kinds of conditions and they'll just do it even better if you stay on top of it. Thanks for watching.